everybody. Once again, it's that magical time of year where I'm assigned a Latin project, so I'm here to tell you a story. This story is Satire 1-9 by Quintus Ferratius Flaccus. So let's begin. Once upon a time, Horace was wandering down the sacred way. He didn't really have anything on his mind. He was just kind of walking and thinking to himself. All of a sudden, a man ran up that Horace knew only by name, and he said, how are you, my dearest fellow? Well, I'm just fine. Thank you for asking. I wish all the same to you. But the man followed Horace, so he stopped and said, uh, I'm sorry, do you want something? Oh, you know me, said the man. I am a man of learning. At which point Horace said, Oh, well, then you have more of my esteem. The conversation kind of trailed off, and it started to get kind of awkward. So uh, Horace decided to speed up, you know, keep walking, and see if he could get away from this guy. Meanwhile, the pest was just kept on talking about really anything and everything, including the neighborhoods they were passing, the city itself, and the people of Rome. Then he said, You want to go terribly? I see it, but it has no effect on me. I gon' stick by you and follow you wherever you're going. At which point Horace said, Oh, no, no, that that's really okay. No, I want to. Where are you going? Oh, no, it's fine. I'm actually going to visit a friend. He lives pretty far away. Over by the Tiber, by the Caesar's Gardens, you know? Yeah, you, you don't want to walk all the way over there. Well, that's just fine. I'm not going anywhere. I will follow you there. There wasn't much that Horace could do to stop him, so he just continued along his journey and the pest followed. Then the pest started speaking again, saying, I'll have you know that I'm a bit of a poet myself. In fact, I write real fast, and I write real good, and I write a lot. You know, y you won't think of Viscus or Varius as a better friend than me. In fact, I'm also a really good dancer. I can sing pretty too. At this point, Horace had to interrupt him, saying, Oh, okay, well, well, that's great and all, but do you have a family, you know, anyone to look after you, make sure you're okay? And Horace said, To which the pest said, No, I buried them all. Oh, well, lucky then. Now I'm here, alone, listening to you talk. <sighs> Just like that old Sabine woman said all those years ago, she shook that urn and told my fortune, and she said, No, you won't be killed by the sword or by disease or by anything. No, you will be killed by a man who talks too much. So thank you for killing me. At this point, about a fourth of the day had passed, and they arrived at the temple of Vesta, the goddess of the hearth. If you love me, you'll come inside. Wait, if, if I love... No, I, I don't even know who you are. We've just been talking. Well, really, you've been talking to me. But no, I'm not going to come inside. I have to go visit my friend. Well, then it seems we've reached an impasse. Should I abandon you or my quest? Uh, me. Definitely me. You should go. Nope, I'm staying with you. Let's go. And the pest took the lead. Horace really had no chance but to follow. And the pest began talking again. So, how are things with you and my synos? You know... Y'all chillin' up there with your fancy poetry words? You know, I write poetry too. Maybe y'all could let me in your little group you have up there. Seems like a nice place. Yeah, it's, it's a nice place. You know, there's no house in Rome that's freer and more remote from the evils of nature. Also, it's really never of any disservice to me that any particular person is either wealthier or smarter than me. Everyone knows their place. It's really quite nice. Oh, well, that's scarcely credible. Yeah, I know, but that's the way it is. Hmm. You further inflame my desires to go see this mice and all. Well, okay, good luck. I mean, he's a nice guy, but he tends to make it difficult for people he doesn't know to get into his house. Well, that's just fine and dandy. I'll wait outside his house every day, and I'll buy off his servants and follow him in the streets till he loves me. Oh. 
At this point, a dear friend of Horace's runs up named Fuscus Aristius. He begins to talk to the two. Hey guys, uh, where have you guys been? Where are you two going? At this point, Horace tried to get Fuscus' attention, let him know that the pest was really making him mad and that Fuscus needed to do something and get him away from him. But Fuscus thought it was pretty funny, so he didn't do anything. Horace was really mad at that. Oh, right, uh, Fuscus, remember, you were gonna, you are gonna tell me that thing, you know, you know, that real secret thing that you were gonna tell me, and you are gonna, you are gonna tell me in private, right? Oh, right, you know, I would tell you, but it's kind of like the 30th Sabbath day, and it's kind of a big deal, I'm not really supposed to do stuff, so, yeah. I'll tell you some other time, though, bye. And Fuscus left. Horace was really mad at that. But at this point, one of the pest's creditors runs up and says, Hey, where are you going, you infamous fella? Then he turns to Horace and says, You want to witness the arrest? Horace eagerly accepted, and he was whisked away into the courtroom and caught up in the hubbub and finally separated from the pest for good. Thus, Apollo saved Horace that day. Well, that's my story. I hope you enjoyed it. And, yeah, happy holidays, everyone.